Mac here to do a small review on the D800 from Nikon. Got a little time to mess with this one. Um, coming from a D7000 crop body to this full frame. Um, I have narrowed my lenses down a little bit. Um, trying to get more of like four to pretty much do everything. I've got the Tamron 14 millimeter got the 24 to 70 Nikon, the 70 to 200, and the Sigma 150 to uh, 500. And I've just, I've kind of played around with some of them on this body. They all seem to do pretty good, except for the Tamron. I'm not sure if I'm very happy with that one, but I um, have to do a little more testing to see. It's kind of a specialty lens, not a whole bunch you can do with it as far as, I mean, it just doesn't do the best on this. I mean, it's really not optimized for digital SLR anyways. It doesn't have the special coating on the glass that a lot of these do um, that work well with the uh, digital sensor. So um, going into this a little bit, I'm going to talk about, I mean, this is an amazing camera. I'm not just saying that because, you know, I love Nikon and such a big fanboy. I mean, I am, but... I'm not going to just, I, I do have some downsides to this, they aren't huge, but you know with any camera it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to it. Um, obviously we have the camera here, I'm going to put it aside and we're going to look at the box real quick here. Um, comes with manuals in English and in, I don't know what the other one is. I think it's Spanish, but um, you have a pretty big manual here. Let's see, it comes with the strap, you know, all the other stuff, not even worth going into it. The good thing I like about it is I have a D7000 as a backup and uses the same battery, so got two of the same batteries and you can use the same charger, so all that's going to stay in here. Um, if you, I did do a quick overview of the manual, you know, if you're pretty familiar with crop body cameras, like if you really understand digital SLRs, there's not a ton of difference if you're going from a D, I don't know, let's say you have a DX camera that's like a pretty good one that's like a D7000 that's got pretty much all the features or a D3S or I mean a, D, a D300, <laughs> I'm sorry, then most of the features are going to be pretty similar and since the D7000 was a newer model camera, some of the things are very similar. Like you have the autofocus switch is just like the 7000 is down here. They've made a lot of the same buttons on the back are very similar. They've just changed a few things like you got your live view, you have a, mi a movie mode and camera modes. So you can switch between these so you get different options in each. Um, you have the lock switch here for focus lock. Um, the D-pad's a tiny bit different, it's not a big deal. Um, you have your, your metering select, which I really love this because you can change it very quickly. Um, you have your autofocus lock, I mean your autofocus right here button. You have the, um, the lock, that's so you can, you can lock your, um, your exposure and focus which is nice if you're manually focusing but you don't want to change the switch on the lens or the camera you can just hold this and manually focus and press the shutter if you're doing wildlife or something and you have a small bird and it's catching focus off of it easily using autofocus but those are some things I mean a lot of people have said they don't like this video button up here personally I love it because if you're holding the camera regularly, you still, most of them have the menu, the movie button back here, but this one has it up here, so it's kind of near the shutter, which I, I mean, some people don't like it, I do like it, um, so I can press that pretty easily. Um, other than that, uh, one thing that took me a little while to find out, but obviously is in the manual and you can set it up, but a great thing about this camera is you can change obviously to DX mode like all the FX bodies you can change the DX mode but they've never really been useful in other FX cameras because other FX cameras before this were 12 megapixels and the DX mode which you're getting maybe 5 5 megapixels so nobody really wanted to use that but in this with 36 megapixels in DX mode you're still getting 15 and um, 
that's equivalent to probably, you know, the D7000s up there with 16, so it's pretty much the same. And the ISO is better on this, so wildlife, I mean, there's no reason to even use a DX camera for that extra reach. I mean, just use this and put it in DX mode, or you can just shoot it regularly and crop in. You're just going to have more bigger size, so you're going to have to mess with bigger size um, images and crop down, so it's going to take more processing power. Um, I would like to show you some videos, sample videos I've done with this, and some photography I've done with this. I'm going to shoot a little bit more. I'm going to edit them, put them on the computer, get them all ready, and I'll put that in the second part of this video. But we're going to go into, I guess, a little more of the features and things that we just turned this on and got menu mode that looks pretty normal. Um, you have your live view. see what it has. It's showing the mic if you can see that now. You see the mic on that. It gives you a few different options. We have the, the graph there. You have the, I'm sorry, the graph, but this is actually the histogram graph. That's nice. You got your um, vertical horizon feature, and then mic. So you got the grid. So four different things. Now, as far as if you're coming from a DX body to this, you're going to be astounded. I mean, obviously, even with the older FX cameras, ISO is amazing. Um, you can actually use it. <laughs> I mean, I remember the D7000. I mean, I love the camera and all. I'm not going to sell it, you know. I'm going to keep it for a backup because you can't get a ton of money for them anyways. But ISO, I mean, I guess I'm kind of picky about it, but I didn't like to go over four or five hundred with it or I'd see pretty noticeable noise um, unless there's really good light out. Um, this, gosh, I was shooting 1600. Um, I mean, you can even shoot at 5000 if you want. Um, still usable images and they look great. I mean, I was doing some wildlife with this. I just put it, I mean, I was using this uh, Sigma, which, I mean, it's it's a 6.3 and I like to stop it up to about f8 because that gets the sharpest images but put it on f8 put the ISO at about 1600 2000 here I can get the shutter speed up to a thousand I can get it up into that area I can shoot wildlife on my tripod even a handheld pretty well um, and get really sharp images of bird even in flight with it um, I could never do that with the 7000 um, it was always just on that edge of being noisy because I'm having to run high ISO or having to run too low of a shutter speed and just getting terrible images because it's hard even with a tripod to get a sharp image of something you're trying to go around you know capture a bird or something moving you know even with a tripod at a I don't know hundredth two hundredth of a second it's it's it was getting soft images so getting it up to a thousand this, it makes this, I'll show you some sample photos later, but I was very surprised at how well this, this lower end telephoto, super telephoto does. This, the uh, 70 to 200, just on another level with the 800. Um, I thought it did great on the 7000, um, but it just takes great photos on the, um, on the 800. And it, it, it kind of takes on a new, I guess, if you would say, because of the focal length difference, it, it actually, at 70, you can use it a lot more than you can on a DX camera. At 70, you know, it was pretty close to subjects. Now on an FX body, it seems like a really great all-around lens. Um, you know, it is kind of heavy, and once you put it on the body, it's, you know, it, it isn't light, but it, I can see using this a ton. Now this this lens does great on it too. This is the um, 24 to 70. Um, I'm gonna have to do some more testing, but it, it seems to just do great. It's just this. I don't know. I just love the results that it comes out with. Um, other than that, uh, if we do talk about, I don't know. If you want to say there's bad things about the camera, of course no camera's perfect, and I'm not gonna say it's bad. 
Um, other than how it feels in your hand, it feels great. I mean, I love the size and the weight is perfect. I couldn't ask for any better about that. And the buttons are great layout. I love it. Um, the only thing is, going from a 7000, I know a 7000 is a pretty well built camera for the price, but I thought I was going to feel a substantial upgrade in build quality and I don't really think I have with this and I know it's not a D4 I know it's not even a D3S as far as um, build quality you know and even the 700 might be better than this as far as build quality I couldn't tell you it's just I mean even the pop-up flash I mean I really wish they didn't even put it on there I don't you know it is a kind of entry-level full-frame camera so they're appealing to people who are going to use a pop-up flash but it is plastic. Um, there are more plastic pieces than I thought would be on the camera. Obviously, it's mostly magnesium. Um, the, the bottom is, the back is, part of the top is, and most of the front is. But it's not full magnesium body. Pop-up flash is plastic and feels a little, makes noise and feels a little cheap. I don't expect it will break unless you drop it on it or something. But... Other than that, I was thinking it was going to feel a little better as far as build quality. I don't think it's much of a better build quality than the 7000. I mean, it may be, maybe I'm just not going to use it, you know, up to that par. But, I mean, for me, it'll be perfectly fine. Uh, other than that, um, which this is totally common, there's not going to be, I mean, this is my, maybe because I'm using an SD card right now, but... I'm going to be getting the car, the uh, compact flash also very soon, but other than that, it's a little slow. I mean, if you're shooting a ton of pictures and you put it on the CH, you know, your, your constant um, full four frames per second. Once you start to write, the write buffer does take a minute, and then you, if you go to review through the pictures, it's a little slow. But, I mean, the pictures are 80 megabytes if you're shooting raw almost, you know. 60, 80 megabytes and, you know, lossless compression. And you can even do TIFF if you wanted, but oof, I don't know. That's that's going to be probably hundreds of megabyte files. So it's a tiny bit slow um, as far as if you're doing continuous shooting, bursting, you know, trying to do a lot at a time, it's going to get a little slow. But, you know, that's where you buy a D4 if you really need that speed, if you need the 10 frames per second. But, I mean, I don't at all. Um, as far as I've seen comparisons, as far as ISO between the uh, D4 and this, and the amount of difference is, is not a huge amount. For the price point that this camera comes in at, I think it does amazingly well. Um, so, other than that, I mean, I'm going to show you some images I took, and we'll do, I don't know, 100% crops of them and stuff like that. Put a sample video up and things. Hopefully I've um, went through enough things. I guess I'll go through the menu here and just check a few things that you might see if you're used to a DX mode versus it. It has vignette control on it, so, you know, if you're using DX lenses or, you know, just an FX lens that ha may have a little vignette or you're using wide apertures or even a wide angle that may have problems with that. You have a vignette control which is low, normal, and high and that'll just bring back some of the um, brightness in the corners of the image. Um, other than that, going from the 7000 has pretty much the same menu here. Um, obviously you have a shooting bank menus instead of the user controls, two different ones. You can set A, B, C, and D as far as whole different menus, like a whole menu setting. Like you can go into A and change everything shooting and controls of how the buttons are laid out and set that as your A. And then you can go into B and, you know, change everything like that. Um, what else we have? You have more options as far as bracketing you know you can do up to nine exposures bracketed on this um you know most of the other that's pretty common with fx cameras i think the 700 did seven frames bracketed max i don't really know somewhere around there obviously the 7000 dx modes will do three frames bracketed max um 
other than that, pretty much not a ton of difference between the 7,000. You get, you know, a few more options and obviously a much better viewfinder, high ISO capability, FX. I mean, you get, as far as contrast and the color ren rendering of this camera, I believe from what I've shot, it's great. I mean, it's much better than the um, 7000 also. Um, everything just seems to be great about this camera. I can't find much of a fault with it at all. I'm going to have a great time with it and until next time, keep it locked. Here are the sample pictures. This is the Tamron 14 millimeters indoors in a bathroom with very little lighting. This is 5000 ISO and you can see here this is zoomed in at 100 percent. That's with a little bit of noise reduction. It, it comes out looking pretty clean so that's not too bad for 5000 ISO. You can still see pretty sharp lines so it's just a little bit of noise here. Here is outside at 1600 ISO, same lens, wide angle. Here it is at 100%. Does pretty sharp, pretty sharp. Here is a 24 to 70, the Nikon 2.8. It's pretty sharp there at 100%. Here's a really good example of you can see the detail here on the 24 to 70. Now, look at this picture. We have um, a flower in focus, and at 100%, you can see this fly even in sharp focus, and that is a tiny thing. Moving on to the 70 to 200 VR2. Now, this is the Sigma 150 to. Um, 500 and here's a catching a bird in flight here's another one of that same bird on that tree that's very far away and it's probably 50 or so feet at the end of my yard and it's still it does a pretty good job of capturing it here is probably the same bird but closer on the feeder so it does a pretty good job there Okay, here is the sample video I was talking about. This is recorded at 720p. Obviously, this camera can do um, 1080 at uh, 30 frames per second, but I'm using um, 60 frames per second here, and I'm going to show you here a slow down motion of it. I'm not actually talking, so I don't know when this video is to start, but you'll see it, and it'll be a slowed down video. So it'll basically be half the frame rate, but still at the full 30 frames a second. So this can be useful if you want to do that slower look, but still have a very fluid motion. 